Welcome back. Uh, in this episode, we are going to work on this power supply of the MZ80K. And one of the first decisions I have to make is whether to replace this uh, original switching power supply with a modern uh, one that uh, would fit right under that case, so it would, wouldn't be visible that I changed the power supply. Um, this one yeah, not only is dirty, it has some rust on the main transformer, but other than that, it it seems to be a pretty well designed power supply, very robust. Uh, look at the rectifying diodes there to the lower right. They are encased in their own little heat sinks. Um, everything is fused. All the diodes have little heat sinks. Pass transistors have enormous heat sinks. I don't have modern equivalents for these two pass transistors, so they ought to be working. Uh, otherwise, I cannot. Uh, um, uh, do, do much about it. And the modern equivalents don't fit in that uh, footprint. Uh, but this seems to be a pretty okay, well-designed power supply. Um, I have to look at the back of the boards to make a decision. It has a lot of flux residue, but other than that, it seems to be a very well-designed board, um, highly tinned, uh, which is important for a power supply that the traces have enough conductive capacity, so extra tinning helps. So it's looking good, but to, to satisfy myself that I don't need to replace anything that I don't have modern equivalents for, I'm testing the power rails unloaded because I'm not checking for ripple at this point. I just want to see if the power rails are alive. As you just saw, 5 volts is alive, uh, but 12 volts, which I'm checking now, is not. Minus 5 was alive as well. 12 volts is not alive. It could be something as simple as a fuse, or it could be something major. So let's check the fuses first, to make sure they are all conducting. So far so good. This is the third one, it is conducting. But the fourth one is not. It's not conducting, it seems to be open. Uh, and that's exactly the fuse in the 12 volt line. So if the problem is only this fuse and I get a living power rail on 12 volts after replacing the fuse, um, then this is a, a, a refurbishable uh, a power supply that I can restore uh, without having to manhandle the holes and you know, adapt the packages. This fuse is really blown, <laughs> as you can see there. I wouldn't be surprised if the, the mods of the previous owner were responsible for blowing that fuse. Um, I'm temporarily going to put another fuse there that doesn't have the correct ratings, but I just want to see if the, the rail is alive. So I'm putting some contact cleaner there, to make sure that uh, whatever I read is, is a representative reading uh, of the situation and not masked by grime and dirt. So I'm putting another uh, fuse in there. I'll make sure that uh, it is conducting, not by measuring uh, the terminals of the fuse, but my, by measuring the terminals on the fuse holder itself to make sure that uh, there is conduction there. If it is, then I would just turn the power supply on again and, and, and measure the 12 volt rail. So as you can see there, it is conducting. So if I don't see 12 volts, it's, the problem is elsewhere. So I connected the multimeter again. I just have to turn on the power supply now. Let's see. On we go, 12.3 volts, more or less. So that's good, there will be a lot of ripple there because I'm not using a load, but uh, that's good. I will restore this power supply, starting by cleaning all that um, excess flux, uh, residual flux at the bottom. So it's more pleasant for me <laughs> to work uh, on this. Uh, I'm also blowing off some dust with an ESD safe uh, dust blower because um, there are semiconductors, there are two ICs on this board. The switching controllers uh, are ICs, there are also diodes. So ESD precautions need to be taken. Now, uh, the plan of attack is I will recap the board entirely, the electrolytics, including the tantalum capacitors, and I will change the two ICs that you see there, those two dip ICs. They are the switching regulators, and they are still manufactured to this day. You can buy them brand new from Mauser and DigiKey. So I will socket and replace them because uh, if those go wrong, you can have a very wrong voltage at the output and ruin the rest of the circuit. I start by putting some rust converter on the transformer to get rid of the rust that you saw there. And from this point on, I will just give you a musical uh, time lapse uh, of the work I did. I will come back for testing at the end.
these transient voltage suppression diodes, they, they work as an extra layer of protection that I've decided to add. When the voltage crosses uh, the specified uh, limit, 5, minus 5, or plus 12, they clamp to ground and hopefully will cause the fuses to blow before uh, the computer is damaged. Um, they are not as good as a real crowbar circuit. Um, a crowbar is capable of passing a lot more current to ground and therefore really ensuring that the fuses will blow before the excess voltage gets to the computer. But I didn't want to disfigure the power supply and with this TVS diode I can just put them underneath uh, the PCB. They will be invisible and the power supply will look exactly as original. So now is the time to see the final result of all this hard work. Now we need to test the power supply and to test a switch mode power supply correctly we need a load and I'm using these two 2.2k uh, ohm uh, resistors uh, capable of 2 amps. Um, I only have these very high valued resistors uh, with uh, um, large uh, wattage capability. Ideally I should be using um, less resistance to draw more current uh, to 2.2k resistors in parallel will give uh, an equivalent resistance of uh, a little over 1k and as you see there that's not enough for us to measure the, the ripple of the 12 volt rail properly. There's a lot of ripple and um, it's not really representative because the 12 volt rail will provide about 1 amp to the monitor um, so in real life you would not have that much uh, switch mode noise for the minus 5 and plus 5 volt lines, as you can see there, the ripple with peak to peak is below 50 millivolts, and that's what I want to see. So those two rails are tested fine, um, no problems there. But for the 12 volt rail, yeah, that, that's another story. The switching noise I was observing there is much higher than what you're seeing now. And this is one of the 5 uh, volt lines, uh, either minus 5 or plus 5. Those are fine, you can see there the switching mode noise, it's very limited amplitude. I doubled the load, I added more resistors, so now we have about an equivalent of a little over yeah, six, 600 ohm or so, draws more current. Um, but for the 12 volt line, as you see there, there is still a lot of switching noise. And the question is, well, would that disappear if I have a proper current draw of 1 amp? Yeah, only with my programmable load I could measure that, but it's up in the loft above the garage, I don't want to take that out. So instead of that, 
I will show you that this switch, switching noise is proportional to the load. See, if I remove the load, the amplitude of the switching noise increases a lot. If I put the load back, look, look. See, the amplitude reduces. If I remove it, the amplitude increases. So I just wanted to show you that um, this problem may not be a problem, that it may disappear once I connect the real monitor. And I didn't want to break out my programmable load. So you have to, <laughs> to be satisfied uh, with this. Uh, we will see when I connect it. I haven't done it yet, but I'm assuming that this power supply is just fine. The switching mode noise uh, is okay, it will be okay when the real load is, is connected. So this is pretty much it uh, for, uh, for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. And next time we will go from the power supply to the analog video board, which also requires a lot of work for a proper restoration. So I hope to see you then. In the meantime, Take care, see you soon.